Uh, now we're going to start our panel, and the moderators we have are people I'm really very much pleased to introduce to you. First is Ruth Conniff, the uh, political editor of Progressive Magazine, and if any of you have read the, uh, haven't seen the Isthmus article about a certain uh, state senator who's now the Democratic leader of the state senate. Yeah. <laughs> I've got plenty of copies sitting in my home. <laughs> Ruth Connick is, the, uh, is uh, the, uh, the editor of the Progressive Magazine and will be our moderator, along with uh, a longtime champion, David Newby, President Emeritus of Wisconsin State AFL CIO. And I asked David, What does President Emeritus mean? And he said, Well, it means I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but David, David Newby and I worked very hard together on a single payer health plan for Wisconsin. And so please welcome our moderator, Ruth Connick. Not, not the Occupy mic check, but an actual <laughs> mic check. <laughs> and now our panelists, uh, please welcome back uh, Doug Follett, Kathy Vinehout, and Kathy Paul. tried to make, make these substantive questions, uh, not the kind of questions that people can ask or can answer, give a good answer in 30 seconds. So we're giving each candidate three minutes to answer each question. However, as we all know in the audience and us, uh, once a candidate has a microphone in their hand, they don't let it go. <laughs> so Lloyd down here has got three lights, three flashlights. <laughs> Uh, one is green, and when you guys see the green light, that means you've got one minute to go. When you see the yellow light, uh, there is 30 seconds to go. When the red light goes on, that means it's over. And Sometimes. there was a uh, buzz, what happened to my bell? I was supposed to have a bell up here. Well, maybe we'll get it. It's up, up on top of the podium. Oh, it's on the podium. Rose, you need to be closer to your mic. North Cobb Bell. <laughs> so, we're not going to even trust you guys to follow the red light. So, if the red light goes on, we're going to remind you that that really is the end of the time. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn it back to Ruth to ask the first question. All right. So, the first question is kind of a warm up. We want to ask each candidate to take a turn answering the question, why should people vote to recall or fire Governor Walker? And why do you feel you're the strongest candidate to challenge and defeat Governor Walker? And if I could, I'd like to add um, just a couple of questions. I'd like to ask each candidate to address sort of the press that you've been getting and what people see as possible deficits. So. Um, for both candidate Lafala and candidate Weinhout, is the support there for you to win this general election in terms of where you are in the polls right now? And for uh, Kathleen Falk, because of the issue that Walker is bound to make, the central issue in this campaign, which is calling you the union candidate, the fact that you have signed a pledge to uh, veto any state budget that doesn't restore collective bargaining rights, why is that not a liability in a, in a state where there are only 350,000 members of unions out of 500 people? So I'd like to ask each of you to first tell us why you're the candidate and then address those specific things that have come up lately in the press. Starting with Kathleen Bobby. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be with her and my friends, uh, Kathleen and Doug, and all of you. And uh, yeah, please take your last first, and then uh, so I make sure I don't, I don't not answer. It. You know, this this movement was started by Governor Walker not being honest with us voters. He never told us he was going to throw out 50 years of workers' rights. 
He never told us that. But that dishonesty is why I believe he was being recalled. And I'm the granddaughter of a bus driver from Milwaukee. I learned early on that I had a better life because my grandfather's generation put together the right to organize, collectively bargain, I have a fair day's wage for a fair day's work, and not to be discriminated in the workplace because of my sex or color or race, safe working conditions. I learned early on that unless we band together, then big powerful interests can hurt the values that we still care about. And this movement over the last year of restoring collective bargaining, as I said in my intro, has been joined because Governor Walker has assaulted all the rest of our shared values, which I know growing up in Wisconsin, being from Milwaukee, Walker Shum, serving you, and helping citizens for 20 years as their environmental lawyer, public intervener, is that we want great education for our kids, decent health care when we need it, a good paying job, and some clean air and water to enjoy with our families when we're not working. And Governor Walker has assaulted every one of those values, and that's why this big tent of organizations that represent <coughs> those values have endorsed my campaign. And I am eager, I am the one that has this fabulous big tent and coalition of values that's necessary to defeat Governor Walker in 51 days. But I also know that it takes somebody not only to be against what Walker has done, we know that. You've got to have the skills and the tools to be able to get the job done to undo his harm. And you know me as a county executive moving an agenda. I not only know how to balance the budget, but I know I'm a change agent. I know how to get things done. And that's why in my campaign, I put out those plans for specifically how to restore the cuts to funding of the technical education system by eliminating one of those uh, big tax loopholes called the Las Vegas loophole that Governor Walker created last spring. Why I put together my jobs agenda on how, how we invest and grow jobs and how I'll have an open, honest, and transparent governor. And that is one of my third uh, important plans that I hope you'll look at. Um, but as I uh, finish my last uh, minutes here um, in answering Ruth's good question, is you know that I remember some years ago, uh, or actually some months ago, they said this recall would never get off the ground. <laughs> And then I remember them saying, you know, a progressive can't vote. And I said, well, you know, we elected Russ Feingold three times in the state. Um, and then they'll say somebody from Dane County can't vote. And I said, oh, we elected Jim Doyle five times in the state. And then I remember them telling Tammy Baldwin she couldn't win. And I think we elected the first woman congressperson in the state. They said that about a woman like me running for county executive 15 years ago. So we have shown this last year that every hurdle they have put up, because the far right extreme wants to keep their extreme governor in place because he is channeling that national agenda, we have stood up, we have said no, and we have won, and that's why we're going to win.